Jobs, 10% uh, increase for the SNP. Labour down 3%. Conservative down 1%. Liberal Democrats down 7 And the swing from Labour to the SNP is 6.6%. Um, Rowan Buchanan, this is significant, symbolic. Uh, I mean, what else is at stake now if with a 6.6% swing to the SNP in a seat like this? Well, the question lots of us had been pondering. Thank you to all of those people who've worked here tonight and worked throughout the day, all of the emergency services, they do a very good job. And that's veteran uh, Labour politician Thank Tom McCabe. Much. He was uh, the Minister for Parliament under Donald Dewar, Minister for Finance after that, Minister under Henry McLeish and Jack McConnell. A uh, very significant figure in the Labour Party and he has lost... I think it's the case for the foreseeable future. OK, Annabel Goldie, thank you very much indeed. So, Stuart Hosey, what do you make of things so far? Uh, well, very good for... Uh, Christine, uh, very good for Linda. Huge media scrutiny over the policies. Now, I remember when your people were on the television talking about their mandatory sentencing policy for knife crime, which became a non-mandatory sentence live on air. And it was the lack of credibility in a lot of these policy initiatives which I think led to many of the problems. Uh, you know, it wasn't a personality debate, although Alec is clearly a, a big figure in Scottish politics. There is maybe a little bit of, of good news for Labour. Their, their vote in, in uh, Hamilton only fell by uh, 4%. The Liberal Democrats did well, worse. Their, their yeah. vote fell by about 6%. So perhaps a little bit of good news for Labour there. It wasn't that disastrous, but at the end of the day, they lost Tom McCabe, who's somebody, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nobody expected to lose. All right, thanks very much for that, Raymond. Um, let's uh, go over now to the news desk, get a quick up sum of the night so far. Here's David Henderson. Yes, Sally, the big news in the last hour for people who are joining us is that Labour have lost two key seats to the SNP in their very heartland, East Kilbride and Hamilton, Lark Hall and Stonehouse. Linda Fabiani was the victorious SNP candidate in East Kilbride. There was a swing of almost 7% said earlier this evening that if his seat went, he thought that all 10 seats in the North East region would go to the SNP. Exciting times in uh, Aberdeen. Thank you very much indeed, Colin White. Let's uh, go to Raymond now, who has uh, taken custody of Brian Taylor's fancy gizmo over there to uh, give us a picture just of what we've learned so far. Indeed, Sally. Not many seats in. This is the current tally. Three to the SNP, one to the Labour Party. But we know this is already quite significant in terms of where the political shift in Scotland seems to be. To be going. Let's have a look. Uh, first of all, at this map, you can see the swathe now of SNP colours. One little plot of red there, and that was the result for James Kelly uh, in Glasgow. Let's take a look now at the targets. The SNP's target list. These are the seats, uh, the key contests where they would need 5% or less change uh, in uh, uh, support to take them. We have Glasgow Southside there, we heard from Nicola Sturgeon uh, earlier on. There's uh, Clydesdale, which we've just seen go to the SNP, go from Karen Gillan of Labour to Aileen Campbell uh, of the SNP, who was the youngest. Now, that is the first 10 key contests for the SNP. Let's have a look at other ones. There's East Kilbride, 12th. They managed to capture that, ousting Andy Kerr. And if you look at that list, you will not be able to find Hamilton on these, this, that key contest list because no one really expected them to oust Tom McKay, but they have done that. And one seat we're expecting to come along fairly soon. Ian Gray admitting to us just a little while ago that his contest in East Lothian was tight. He's up against SNP councillor uh, David Berry. Let's have a look at the Conservatives' target seat. We saw it uh, earlier on. That is Perth South and Kinrosshire. We saw Rosanna Cunningham arriving at that, uh, looking fairly happy. We'll have to find out what has happened there. The Liberal Democrats, uh, we'll have a quick look at them. Of course, their number one target is at Gile and Butte. So they may, they're having a bad night so far. They may hope that it improves 
tomorrow when we expect that result. And let's go to Labour, their target seats, top there, uh, Amund Valley, where we have Angela Constance taking on Lawrence uh, Fitzpatrick, a local councillor. We haven't yet got that result, but as we've already been saying, it's quite, quite a bad night for Labour when it comes to the constituencies. Now, uh, I'll just give you back to the situation we have at the moment. Now, one thing to point out, Sally, is that traditionally Labour have done well in constituencies and not done terribly well on lists. If the trend we've seen so far this evening continues, then it's likely the SNP will do very well on constituencies, but that might affect the number of list MSPs they have. So it might not be complete good news for them. OK, thanks very much. Some very gifted and good people on those mm. lists. But you can't afford a rate of attrition like this, can you, in the Labour Party? Well, the, the nature of the way that the system works in the Scottish Parliament is if you, you know, if you loop, as we have done, obviously lost some constituencies and there may be new people coming on the list and that just will change the dynamic in the group and that's something yeah. for the future. You know, one thing, and I don't, you know, Ian Gray's going to have enough critics and he's a friend of mine and I think he is a talented man, um, but can I just put it this way? thoughts so far? Well, can I give you a bit of gossip from Twitter, which is uh, East Renfrewshire Council saying that the Eastwood Declaration, the Conservatives hoping to do well there with Jackson Council, will be within the next few minutes.